Hey everyone, I'm back to do another unboxing from the Best Arc lineup of tools. The last one was their MIG 145 MIG welder, and today it's going to be their BTC 500 DP plasma cutter. Again, this video is going to be in roughly three sections. It's going to be an initial unboxing, a setup, and then a test of the plasma cutter. And if you find this content useful or entertaining, uh, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll also put a link to the other unboxing video in the description in case you're interested in checking out that welder. I was pretty impressed with the welder, and so I have a feeling I'm going to be also pretty impressed with this plasma cutter. So just like the welder, it looks like it's pretty much mostly set up out of the box. Of course, you will need a air compressor um, with a pretty decent flow rate to operate any plasma cutter. But here it is, similar in size and color to the welder. By default, it looks like it runs on 220, but according to the box, it can also operate on 110. And like the welder, it comes with an adapter to do so. Here's the manual. An airline, I'm assuming, which may or may not be needed. Of course, it has a ground clamp like the welder. Looks pretty robust. The torch itself, which has a standoff, I guess, to help you get the distance. A trigger guard. And the associated connections needing to needed to attach it to the machine. It also looks like it comes with a little multi-tool to help you attach it to the machine, which is nice. And then some various fittings, and it looks like some replacement tips or spare tips. And that's it. That's everything in the box. So that's the unboxing part of it. And now the next step is to move on to the setup, in which case I'm going to do a quick glance through the manual to make sure I don't miss anything. And then we'll get the torch attached, as well as the ground cable, and move on to part three, which is giving it a test. So there's a couple of interesting things I found in the manual. The first is a recommended PSI per voltage range, um, which is just kind of nice that it, it gives you some indication of where you should set the pressure for different voltages. And the next thing that I thought was interesting is Similarly to the welder, this plasma cutter has a sort of cruise control type setting where if you, you can click the trigger and it will run when the trigger is clicked and not run when it's not clicked, or you can set it so you just have to click it and it'll run until you click it again. So if you're doing a lot of cutting, that might help on hand fatigue, or maybe just if you're in a tight spot, make it a little bit easier. As for the front of the machine, it looks like there are two knobs here, some buttons here, a couple of displays, a built-in air pressure regulator, which is really nice, and then down here are the different connections for the leads on the torch and the ground. The first thing that I want to do is attach all of the leads. It looks like the ground 
just twists in here. Again, this is very similar to the welder, and I would even bet that the ground cables are interchangeable. And in fact, this is the ground cable for the welder, and it is actually interchangeable. It looks like the main difference between the two are the welder has a much thicker ground cable than the plasma cutter. But um, so I would I would consider using the welding grounding cable on the plasma cutter, but I don't know that I would use the plasma cutter grounding cable on the welder. Next, I'm going to put on the leads for the torch. It has three leads. One is for the trigger on the handle. That. The second one is for the pilot arc. And then the third one is the airline. So the first one, this is pretty straightforward. It just presses in and then it has a threaded lock to hold it in place. The pilot arc lead looks like it just it just goes on the threaded stud, the washer, and then the thumb screw or thumb nut. And then the final piece is the airline, which they do include some pipe dope tape, uh, but I think that's probably more for another fitting. Um, this looks like a compression fitting, so I'm just not going to worry about the pipe dope. And this can be done tightened by hand. And it feels like it bottoms out very definitely, so I wouldn't over tighten this. Coming around the back of the machine, I'm going to utilize a 220 line because I have it available. And also, you will need some kind of airline input. Now that these two things are set up, I think this is around 120 PSI coming in. And now that it's plugged in and set up, all we have to do is turn on the switch and we can check out what's on the display. It looks like the display takes a few seconds to come on. But once it does come on, you can see a variety of settings that are available to change. The first one, it can sense whether it's 220 or 110 volt, so it will adjust accordingly. And this setting is if you just want to blow air or if you want to actually do some cutting. The next setting down is if you want to cut plate steel or solid, a solid surface versus a mesh surface. I think that's kind of a nice option, and I didn't know that there was a significant difference between the two. But I imagine having the start and stop and start and stop on a mesh surface, this has some sort of provision to make that work nicely. The other two options are the 2T or 4T, which is the difference between it running when the trigger is pulled versus the sort of cruise control setting. And then the last setting is to adjust the time in seconds for the pilot arc, which is PA. So how long the pilot arc should run prior to it then cutting the metal. And then the other option is PT, which is post time which is the amount of seconds that the air will continue to blow through the nozzle after the cutting has stopped. After that, there are two knobs here. One is to adjust the number of seconds between 3 and 15 for both the pilot arc and the post arc or post cutting air time. And then the other setting is the amps, and it can go as high as 50 amps and as low as 15 amps. I'm probably going to land for my test somewhere in the middle, let's say 30 amps. And then also we have a uh, pressure gauge, a digital pressure gauge built in, which presumably this knob 
can adjust up or down, which is really nice, especially to have this all on the front of the machine. And for a 30-ish amp setting, it looks like on 220 volts. Oh, so I guess this isn't actually a uh, chart of how much PSI you need for a particular amperage. It's more of a reference of what the top arc of the gauge means relative to how much pressure it is sensing. Um, but then it does down here recommend somewhere between 30 and 60 PSI when doing 220 volts and somewhere between 20 and 40 for 110 volts. So I'm right at 52. We'll just leave it at that uh, because we're on 220 and the 30 amps. And this should be ready to cut. Now it's time for the testing part of this video. And to test it, I'm going to be cutting the bottom off of this half of metal barrel. Um, I sort of scribed a rough line, guideline. And the project here is that I'm trying to basically turn it into two fire pits. I want like a fire ring that I can have in the ground. So that'll be the top section. And then I'm going to put some legs on the bottom section and make sort of a little portable mini fire pit. The thickness is about a millimeter and a half. Um, it's just a, a regular steel barrel. And so I feel like that's going to be a, a good test. And a couple things that I noticed on the handle, it has this uh, slight swivel functionality on the hose which is just really nice to give it a little bit of strain relief and, and let you move around without being uh, totally shackled by the, uh, by the hose. And then the other thing is you can actually see the pilot arc when you pull the trigger. Uh, Shopcat did not like that noise, um, but I thought it was pretty cool. And you can hear the fans on the unit kick on. Those are the cooling fans. Um, that's just to keep the internals cool. And now let's get to uh, cutting this barrel. Well, that worked really nicely. Uh, the cut is very clean. It was very... I could actually move faster, much faster than the speed that I was moving. It's not exactly a perfectly straight cut, but it'll do exactly what it needs to do for the purpose of this project. And also on the underside, there's very little leftover slag. Of course, this is a relatively thin piece of metal, um, but I'm 
I'm very impressed. I think this this little machine is seems like it's going to be perfect for a hobby user, um, uh, you know, a metalworking artist, um, anybody that needs to do some plasma cutting and do so on a budget. I think this this machine is absolutely fantastic. I'm very impressed with it, just like I was with the welder. Uh, check the link in the description for the video for the welder. And I think that's about it for this unboxing video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check the links in the description. And uh, I'll see you next time. Comment below if, with any thoughts or anything else. All right. Thanks for watching.